So after a hundred day break, I am finally back on YouTube to post a video. And as you can tell by the title, things with the project have changed. Now you might be wondering why the hell would he stop doing this project? Well, it's not what you think. So I'm basically giving up on the twin turbos. That's where we're at. But the reason for that <coughs> is because <coughs> it lies in all the trouble that was caused in trying to get fabrication set up for the car. So last time I left off, you guys watched me basically tie up all the loose ends and prepare the car to get sent off the fabrication, get the intercooler piping done, and pretty much getting the car running and driving on its way to ECU and tuning, all that good stuff. What happened was I got the car loaded up on a trailer, got it ready to take down to the fabricator, told him everything I needed done. He said he could do it. And then later after everything was already planned out, he basically told me I need the car running and driving first. That kind of threw me off because I had told him up front, it will not be running and driving. So unfortunately, I had to take it to another place because I was dead set on getting that problem solved first get the car running and driving, even though it didn't have the parts it needed to run and drive properly, which was very confusing. And I talked to Ray at Fusion Works here in Wichita, Kansas, and he basically told me that more or less the twin turbo setup I have is not going to work out at least at a friendly cost to me. So basically what we discussed was to run the turbos the way they are with all the OEM sensors and to have all my stock electronics from the 350Z, I'm going to need a lot of electronics and a stupid expensive ECU to cover it all. And I think the number he gave me was around $4,700. And I can't remember the make and model of the ECU off the top of my head. But basically what he was saying is this is the only ECU he knows of that will have enough inputs and outputs to control the vacuum switching valves on the turbos, to control all the OEM electronics through a canvas module, to cover the little ins and outs, like maybe boost gauge slash coolant temperature, oil temperature, whatever other sensors he suggested should be put somewhere in the vehicle so I can monitor it as I'm driving. But all in all, $4,700 is way too expensive to run the factory turbos on this car. And honestly, after a short discussion about power and cost, what am I doing? I know for the longest time I was dead set on making the twin turbo project work because it was iconic. It was very nostalgic to the Supra. Basically, using the stock turbos with all the aftermarket parts I put on the 2JZ just kind of completely negated it. Now, you might have seen that FD Sauce on one of my last videos, I gave him a little feature. You saw that he had the twin turbos in there, but that's because he was running the factory ECU, the factory coil packs, and factory injectors, factory air intake. Pretty much everything was stock, so no problem for the factory ECU. The problem with my engine is that I had a lot of aftermarket parts added onto it. In addition to all the things I already mentioned before, that was another problem. The smartest thing to do at this point is to do a single turbo. So that's what we're gonna do. Now I'm not gonna reveal exactly what it is that we're doing because you know, secretive YouTube shit. <coughs> I still wanna make this project interesting for you guys. I don't wanna keep dragging it out because it's already felt like I've been doing that for the last several months. It's just hiccup after hiccup after hiccup. I've gotten to the point where more than anything, I just wanna have my car running and driving. So that's the goal. That's what we're doing. Surprisingly, I can do a big turbo setup and an ECU and a harness for probably just a little bit over the cost of what just the ECU would have cost me doing this twin turbo setup had I decided to do that. I think he gave me a number for around $900 for a turbo, four to $500 for a manifold, a couple hundred dollars for a wastegate, and that would put me in a pretty cheap ballpark for 400 to 500 wheel horsepower. And I don't know about you guys, but that sounds a lot better than a maximum of 400 horsepower crank on stock turbos. And that's a whole lot better than spending $4,700 plus a thousand for miscellaneous fabrication, intercooler stuff, exhaust stuff, not even to mention a harness. But thinking about it this way, I am spending more money now, but less money long term. So this is the smartest option I could think of. And honestly, it's going to be the best power per dollar option as well. So yeah, I mean, I do want to say that I'm sorry for dragging this out. I know you guys have been really eager to watch this. Um, and surprisingly, as long as I've been gone, a lot of you have still been watching the videos. A lot of new people have been subscribing to the channel, which I'm incredibly grateful for. I did not expect that at all. I completely expected the channel to just nosedive. So thank you guys for sticking with me. I definitely could not have motivated myself to get as far as I did without you. And you guys are basically the bread and butter of this channel. 
So again, thank you very much. Now, speaking of you guys, I still am sitting on a review video for cars. I have not forgotten about it. I have not given up on it yet. Keyword yet, because I'm still working on a piece of hardware that can process the video footage. So I don't know if any of you have seen the post I made, but the, the laptop that I'm currently working with is like an Acer Nitro 5 from I don't know how many years ago. It's good enough to run video of like a decent quality, like 1080p, but anything above that, it just dies. Simply cannot compute it. And I'm also having the issue where the footage that I filmed is like starting to get kind of deleted slash choppy as I'm trying to work on it. So now I have to go back and find out what's missing. And it's like a 20 six minute video and that's a tedious amount of work to find exactly what's missing from the video and how to fix it from the 30, 40 minute footage I actually filmed. But anyways, that's kind of the gist of that. Um, that video will come out eventually. And if I've given up all hope on trying to work on it, um, I'll just refilm it. I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging forever. Obviously, I wanna hold true to the things I say. And again, just to reassure you, the channel is not dead. I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna continue making videos. Obviously, I, you guys know I'm not super consistent with anything, but I'm trying my best with what I've been given. And here pretty soon, there's gonna have to be an update about the parts I'm getting because, spoiler alert, they're already on their way. So you guys will just have to stick around until all that gets here. So I know this might not be the video that you expected or really wanted, but it's very necessary that you guys understand what's going on. <clears throat> I still plan to cover everything like I initially intended from start to finish, all the parts, the cost, the steps, all that good stuff. And we're getting so close to the point where I can finally reveal how much I have spent building this project the way it is so far. And I know for a lot of you, that's the most important part because how much it costs basically tells you, is this something I can viably do? So fingers crossed, sometime this year, the car is done. I'm doing my absolute best. I will make sure everything that happens to the car gets documented and put on YouTube at some point because I need you guys to know. That's the whole reason I'm here is to share my knowledge and what I learned with you guys. Now, I don't know what else there is really to go over, but if you guys have any questions or you just want to say anything, be sure to post it down in the comments. I'm going to start responding to those again now that I'm going to start being more active on YouTube. I've kind of just ignored it for a little bit, unfortunately. Anyway, I think that's all I really need to say for right now. If you guys have any questions, just let me know. Again, thank you so much for sticking with me. You guys are the best. If you're new to this video, it's a wonder that you even clicked on it without knowing any context, but I appreciate you for doing that. Be sure to like and subscribe if this is up your alley, and uh, peace out. I will see you guys in the next video.